background. In uh, 1946, I was nine years old, and my father, who is a, a, a landscape architect and a renowned botanist and a horticulturist, mm. um, decided that he would give his son a little space in the yard. When we lived out on a, on a big ranch uh, out outside of Hillsburg in the Dry Creek Valley. We were, we were grape growers and winemakers. So I had to pick up a spot, and it was kind of underneath a couple of redwoods, and he said, this is your spot, and you can plant whatever you want. Well, I didn't have very much money, because when, when we uh, would pick grapes, I'd make a little bit of money. Uh, but so I, I really brought in some of the natives from that grew around up into the hills behind the ranch or down by the creek and this, that, the other. And, and uh, once a week we got to go in town and I bought a geranium and brought it back and it did real well. And I found that it, I made cuttings and pretty soon I had lots of geraniums for all of the relatives and friends that I knew. And that just led to actually to a love of geraniums. I love all plants, but that has been something that is cherished, uh, goes all the way back to uh, me being a little kid. When I was 14 years old, my dad my, uh, got a lot of pressure from my mom and she said, uh, Carol, you're working to death here on the ranch. It's time that you use your degree in landscape architecture and we go to the big city and you get a real job. Uh, I didn't like that, but uh, he was accepted uh, by the state of California and he was a senior landscape architect uh, in the Divisional Landscape Architecture. His job was to landscape, do the design of the landscape for all of the state colleges, like Sacramento State and all of the ones all up and down the state. So he did that and completed, his, uh, completed that assignment at about the time he retired. Well, coming to Sacramento, I had never seen a building over two stories high. Moving to Sacramento was an unbelievable experience for a kid 14 years old. And my dad uh, uh, hired a young lady to take me around. And the first time I'd ever been on a bus before other than a school bus. <laughs> and there was, took me to where there was a theater and other kinds of things happening around town. And springtime came and my dad said, uh, this weekend at, the, at McKinley Park, they're having a geranium show. Why don't you bring some of your geraniums and we'll enter them in the show? They're having a competition. So I took, I took three of my prized geraniums and we went over and my dad helped me and I filled out the little forms and I entered them. Well, I got two firsts and a second. <laughs> well, by the time the show was over, I was a member of the Sacramento Geranium Club. <laughs> Youngest member ever. And by 1967, I was I was its president, but uh, it was a wonderful thing. And all of this time, I, I just love geraniums. And as I grew older, I found that uh, I could get plants from more geraniums from different places around the world. And it finally got to the point where I was getting one to two hundred new varieties every single year, and then finally two to three hundred varieties every single year. And that was maintaining about 600, uh, 700 varieties at home. And most of the varieties that I collected were min what we call miniatures or dwarf varieties, meaning they stayed small. But they're small, that means you can have many more varieties. And so my greenhouse was, was packed. And my greenhouse is different than any greenhouse you ever saw. I have benches in my greenhouse, and there are plants on the benches. And then on the fronts of the benches, I have a device called a pot hanger. And a pot, a clay pot, will clip right into it. So I can use the fronts of the benches. Then I decided if I ran a little close up about 14 inches high and put more of the pot latches on there, I could have plants above the plants that were on the bench. Then I realized that all that space above there to the ceiling rafters was not being used. So I had hangers coming down that came down within about 15 inches of the plants that were in the middle, and so there was another level. Well, the, the sun worshippers were on the top. The ones that wanted to have a little bit, of, a little bit more shade and comfort were in the middle, and the real shady characters were on the bench. So that way, I could have several. Well, like I said, six, seven hundred varieties in in, the, in my greenhouse. 
Well, some of the things that I did with, with my geraniums, I would go out and talk to them. I learned how at a very early age, how to speak geranium. <laughs> and that, that just absolutely resolved a lot of issues. When you got a new geranium, you take the plant in, introduce it to everybody, and you'd ask the new geranium, where would you like to be? And at first they weren't sure, so you'd try them there, and they you could tell they didn't like it, so you'd move them over here, and then pretty soon, big smiley face, and the leaves, well, everybody was happy when they were in bloom. All this was wonderful and great until four years ago. And finally, it became impossible for me to import geraniums from the other countries. The U.S. Department of Agriculture had decided that the geranium plant was a perfect host to the potato virus from Europe, and they didn't want to lose all the potatoes. And rather than listen to, uh, to us in the business of growing geraniums, that uh, we could spray all these critters before they came over, and it would all be just wonderful, they just said no. Well, I had, a, I had a source at that point, because that, uh, that action actually goes back about 10 years ago. But I had a source for it in, in uh, Canada, where the plants would all go to Canada for a year, and then I could buy from Canada, legal. And so finally she got older, and she finally said, Don, I can't do this anymore, I'm retiring. So poof, what do I do now? Well. Flowers and photography have always been, uh, kind of go hand in, hand in hand with me. And I started thinking about, I've always wanted to grow cacti and succulents. And then I went, why not? So I decided, I made an announcement to some of my closest friends, I'm getting rid of all my geraniums, and I'm going, so I gave them all to the club and let them sell them and keep the money. That mean I had, had all my tables of the river were available for cacti. Within 30 days, I had a collection of 240 species <laughs> of cacti and succulents and space for many more. And uh, it was fabulous because as you'll see when we go through the photography, the cacti and succulents have this magnificent beauty about them that is just unbelievable. And in many cases, the flowers are only open for a part of the day. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, they're only open from 3.30 in the morning to 5.45. <laughs> and that's not the normal time that I'm doing anything outside of bed. But uh, nevertheless, when you're, when you're an advocate like I am, you get the camera and you go out there. And uh, I have special lights in the greenhouse that I can turn on. And of course, these flowers aren't going to close that quick. I can get them. And, and so I'll take some of these bizarre shots. But the cacti was, was absolutely a novelty. What's happening to me now is devastating with the drought. Mm. The rats are overrunning the, our area of town. I live along the American River near Watt Avenue in Sacramento. And uh, on an average week, I nail about three to five rats. Now what the rats do, I've got bait, I've got traps, I've, I've hired professionals, I've done, spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The rats will come in and they will eat the choice bits, which are all the flower buds or flowers. And then certain varieties that I have, I have a complete collection of one species of succulent from Africa. It, it took me forever pulling strings and everything else to get all 28 of the species of the entire family. Wow. And I think I'm the only person in the United States that probably has all 28 of them. That was like chocolate candy for the rats. <laughs> oh. So all of those plants are hanging from the ceiling by wires. And uh, so they're, they're safe, they're safe. But I didn't bring any plants today because they've been ravaged. All of the flower buds that I had Two days ago, are all gone. I can't raise tomatoes anymore. And my greenhouse, you, um, they somehow still get in there. They'll go to the part, the effort where they'll dig eight inches down underneath the foundation and back up into the greenhouse. To and so I'm constantly plugging tunnels. Um, I don't know what there is. I, I and 
Somebody said, well, get a cat. Well, I'm going to put a cat in there because the cat, I can see the cat racing down the bench after, <laughs> after, after the rats. And I've got $12,000 worth of succulents that have just been born all the hell. So that wasn't, that wasn't, uh, wasn't a good idea. So I'm kind of going back into geraniums for a while until the rats cool their heels. But I will, at the very slightest of a drop of a pin, I would grab a cactus again. And those, there's some that I'm going to certainly grow. So there's some interesting things about cacti. Many of the ones we buy grow outside the United States, and therefore they are frost tender. But most all of the, the species that grow inside the United States, from, from uh, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, California, and uh, are tougher than nails. And they can take temperatures down to 20, 30 below zero. And they'll do wonderful in your yard. And they'll take the heat and say, give me more. And they'll bloom their hearts out. A member of our, of our club, the Carmichael Geranium Society, his entire yard, front yard, backyard, side, both side yards, it's all cacti. He very seldom ever waters. Once in a while in his bigger cacti, he has to have some help, uh, and they bring, come in with a huge crane and reach all the way over to the backyard because this cacti is now 25 feet high. It's an apuntia and it has the big cattle-like leaves, and each of these leaves probably weighs 35 to 40 pounds. And what he didn't want to get it to a point where it falls over and kills the neighbor. <laughs> so he'll, he'll, about every two years, they've got a big investment of coming in and have the professionals come in and, and saw out the, and prune back the cacti. There's, growing cacti, there's a hazard involved, as you can realize. And this gentleman, since he has some of the big barrel cactus that are just huge, and have the big golden spines for about this long. And if you want to kill something, just throw it on top of the cactus. Well, uh, here, here, Norm goes out into his yard. He is out there every day because he has this love for cacti as I have for geraniums. So he's out there, and he'll be bending over doing something, and he'll back up. <laughs> then he'll go in the house, and his wife will put a pair of tweezers and a pair of pliers to pull out the thorns that he couldn't pull by hand. Once in a while, he'll trip. And this is where the real big owie comes in. And uh, there's four or five times now in, in, in the, just the four years that I've known him where uh, he'll come to the meeting and he's like that and we'll say, again, Norm, yeah, this was a bad one. Uh, I had over 1,700 needles in me that had to be taken out in the emergency room. Now, I don't urge you to go out and tear up all of your landscaping and put in what Norm has, but they're, they're think the, the cacti and, and the succulents too are, do so well in our region, and there are so many choices. Um, and they're inexpensive because they are so widely grown by so many wholesale nurseries in California that the retail, retail nurseries uh, carry gods of them, just wonderful things. Uh, and it's fun to play around with them, whether you have them in a container or you get some of the varieties that will get bigger than me. Uh, and, and a lot of times you can look at the name and go on the internet and find out a little, little bit more about it. Yes, you do not want to plant a saguaro under the eaves. <laughs> it will lift the roof right off your house. Uh, but, but there are so many choices, and if you do decide to, to collect them, they're really easy to grow. These things grow in the poorest soil in the world, so if you go out and fertilize them, that's something that they don't know about, and it will make them grow fast, and really, it's like us eating too much, we'd all be this big around. Uh, and they don't really like that much fertilizer, so you can neglect is what they like. So think about cacti and succulents. What I'm gonna to do today is take you on a little trip uh, we're going to go through primarily all of the ones that I grow and have, have been growing the last four years in my greenhouse. And it's just fun as the dickens. And every time I go out, there's, there's something new that says, Don, you didn't get me last time. I'm over here. <laughs> so with that, uh, we'll entertain you and with the sleep.